Okay, so in this video, I'm going to take a look at uh, Apple uh, option data. Um, and to access Apple, uh, we just go into Apple uh, Yahoo uh, Finance, and that will bring up uh, the stock itself and just some of the um, foundational or fundamental uh, data relating to P ratio and um, dividend and the current uh, stock price and at the bid ask currently um, in vogue. And then if we come over to the options tab, uh, that will allow us to take a look at all the side bets that take place in the form of calls and puts. And there is uh, quite an amount of option data there. And there's uh, this is for the current um so this is for today in fact right and we're now uh eight o'clock um irish time right dublin time if we uh, check the time in the us usa time so east coast and we it's currently uh 15 uh, 18 so three in the afternoon um east coast so if we want to take a look here at this data and look at uh, the expiry, each of the expiry dates, we'll see just another chain of options uh, trading. Some in the money, some out of the money, uh, denoted by the blue and the white. And then we have call prices and put prices, uh, our values. Um, bid and ask is sort of the current state of play somebody currently wishing to buy at this price, somebody currently wishing to sell at the ask price. So it, it can be a patchy when you're very far away from the current stock price, noting that the current stock price is 175.85. And um, if you look here, quite a range of so 20, 55, all the way through to 225. So when we eventually take in our data, collect all our option data here, we might be interested in pruning some of the data for the deep in the money, deep out of the money options, options that might have low volume, a small amount of open interest where it implied volatil volatility is a bit wild, right? Zero and, and so on, probably are options that are a bit stale or haven't been actively traded uh, currently and probably far away from the current stock price. So we can use some uh, Python script, and I'm going to make use of the Y Finance package uh, to pull in our data. So just to take a look at that for a moment, if we invoke Y Finance um, by importing in, um, now it takes a second or two to connect to the Google servers, right? Uh, it looks like we're there and we have the first set of data coming in. But if I want to pull in the entire option chain, and also bring in some data relating to the stock price, um, the dividend yield, uh, maybe the interest rate. We might assume an interest rate of 5%. We'll take a look here in the content folder. So just to see what the effect here is, if I delete out that file and want to drag in um, the content folder. So just to take a look at our where in our content folder our data is. If we go in here and open up our content folder, uh, that's the directory where we can park our data, read in data or write out data. So with this piece of script here, we're going to pull in Apple data by using the Apple ticker. And we're also going to take a look at the dividend. And uh, we want the current stock price and we want the expiry date and we want to estimate uh, the number of days to expiry as well. So we want the full range of option prices, the bid ask. Um, we want here, we've developed a user defined function, but it's just going to, in a very arbitrary way, uh, spit out 5.5%, but that can be modified to suit um, whatever you view the uh, appropriate uh, risk-free reference rate, right? So we can develop an API to do that. So if we run that data, we, that script, 
we'll see, and we refresh the content folder, we can see our option data has come in and I can rename this data. So just rename the file. And we might put a date on the file. The date is the 12th of April, 04, 24, 2024. And the time is 2022. Okay, and that change, and then we can download that file. And then we can go into our um, folder and just, and the file is here, right? And just open it up. And we don't have to convert and we can eyeball directly the data. So what we observe here is basically all the data in on the Yahoo portal. Uh, the date, the option last traded, the strike price, the last price of the option, which is the price yesterday, but the current state of play is more better understood by looking the bid and the ask, the change, percent change, the volume and open interest give us a sense of the level of activity in the option, trading the option. Uh, implied volatility, which is a little bit wild because four is 400%. And then expiry date of this option for the first date is actually today. And then, um, so we have, and the, today's date is also the 12th to the 4th. And the number of days to expiry logically is zero. And the stock price we've brought in is 175.97. Dividend yield, arbitrary, well, the dividend yield has come from the portal is 5.5%, uh, zero, half a percent. And we've just thrown in a treasury rate that we've arbitrar arbitrarily plucked out and said it's 5.5%. Now, if we go down through the range of, maybe we can uh, impose a pause screen, freeze screens and then just toggle down through an eyeball or data, take a note of the expiry date. So the next, so next week is the 19th, right? And that would mean seven days. And the implied volatility is quite high, seven, uh, 700%, 300%. So these options look a little bit wild, but that's because the exercise price is so far off the mark compared to where the current stock price is. So ultimately we may prune uh, these uh, more extreme in the money, out of the money options um, as we clean up our data set. But um, if you want to take a look at how many options then we scraped, there's 1,908 and maybe half, close to half is puts, half for call options. Um, in the money, out of the money, with varying um, strike prices, sometimes way off the mark. So we've seen options here with um, values like five, there's one but 100 strike price, 200. And then we have a, a weird, uh, the next set of options there maturing on the 20, on the 19th, so that's a, in a week's time, there's some options that have a strike price of 5, 10, when the current stock price is 175. And we, if we take a look at the implied volatility in that option, it's up at 11. That's, um, you know, uh, a, a thousand percent, which is, is uh, really wild. But if you then take a look at the those strike prices closer to the current stock price, uh, the volatility tames comes back a little bit. So the, here's one at 99%, exercise 125, not too far away. And if you if you look here, we'll sort of can see a kind of uh, volatility skew that the um, implied volatility uh, drops down 
and then starts to taper up a little bit, right? And that normally would be kind of the um, the stylized representation of implied volatility for a given uh, exercise date. Uh, these are all the 19th call options. Okay, so that's uh, the data. So I'll save the data on my computer and then next step will be applying, uh, cleaning up the data and applying a Dumas Fleming-Whaley uh, type um, of analysis.